Hi, this is Bo from Aircraft and Pixels. Uh, today we're going to continue with the 124 scale Airfix Spitfire Mark 1 build. Um, as you can see, I have uh, started to uh, do some surgery on the parts, uh, but we'll talk about that more in a later installment. To, in today's installment, I'm going to just talk about some of the references that I'm going to be using off my bookshelf and from around the internet and so forth for uh, informing how this thing is going to go together. So, let's have a look. Um, I've got a pile of old Spitfire books. Some old, mostly old, some new. Most of them are fairly useless. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not really going to talk about that or this. And this one's pretty interesting. Yeah. So this is a Japanese publication from the 1990s. Uh, it's Aero Detail number eight. Notice they've spelled detail wrong. I don't know why. The other ones they have it spelled right on the cover, but you know, I guess translation. Um, it is, like I said, a Japanese publication in the 90s. This was before the internet for those of us that wanted to have walk-arounds. Uh, this was about the best that there was. So basically, although the title says Spitfire Mark 1 through 5, the walk-around subjects are all museum uh, specimens of Mark 1s. They're all in Great Britain. Um, the caveat, of course, is that they were went to the museum after their service life. And so, like um, almost all the Mark I's that are in existence, they have been extensively modified. And they haven't been modified back to really 1940 standards. So there's a lot of things on them that are not really correct for uh, 1940 era Spitfire Mark One, But anyway, this is organized into um, kind of in a kind of lovely way with detailed photographs of all the parts. Again, though, you have to be sort of careful. You know, the exhausts are not correct for a 1940 Spitfire. Um, the canopies on all four of these planes are uh, also Mark V canopies. Um, some of them have been retrofitted to have the uh, famous crowbar, which was not in existence in 1940 from everything that I've read. Um, and there's lots of other things, too. So you have to be very careful. Um, these, um, there are tons of photographs of these uh, same four planes on the net right now that you can find. But this is kind of a, a lovely um, sort of, you know, one-stop uh, shopping to sort of uh, at least get detailed images of these four planes. There's also one in Chicago, another Mark I. It's the same as these in, in the sense that it's been pretty extensively modified. You know, again, these have metal ailerons, all four of them, um, which would not have been what they were equipped with in 1940. But uh, these, are, these are cool books. Um, if you can find it, I do recommend them. Um, they're just kind of lovely. Uh, the text is not completely translated everywhere, so there are some mysteries if you don't read Japanese, which I do not. Um, but, uh, you know, as a place to have, you know, at, at your thumbs, uh, a Spitfire Mark I or a Spit, you know, early Spitfire uh, reference, it's, pretty, it's a pretty nice place to start if you can find it. Um, besides the... Uh, Walk around photos. There are some color, uh, color plates, color drawings of the standard camouflage schemes, which, as far as I can tell, are pretty accurate as far as they go. Um, you know, famous uh, evolution of the underwing or sorry, underside uh, schemes. And there's also some nice. Uh, you know, cutaways and detail scrap drawings 
Uh, this is a Merlin Mark II, unfortunately. You know, Mark, Mark III's are what you'd find in a Spitfire in 1940. Um, so that's sort of, you know, it's a, it's a good drawing as far as it goes, and you'll find this drawing on the net all over the place. It's been copied in a million Pinterest boards. But anyway, so this is this book, um, and it's it's pretty nice. I recommend it if you can find it. Uh, there's also uh, plan drawings in the back. There are some errors on these drawings that I've picked up. Um, pretty small, pretty you know, pretty minor things, but things you know, gotchas like this little uh, uh, access point for the uh, I think it's for the battery or it's for something. Um, anyway, that is not on the at least the early and mid-production Spitfire Mark 1s. They show it as being on all of them. Um, and then there's, of course, plan view. I think these, yeah, these are all in 148th scale. So pretty easy to scale up the drawings with if you have a scaling divider uh, and you want to get some dimensions off of it, can be done. So anyway, arrow detail number eight. If you can find it, I recommend it. Um, so <laughs> you're going to say Spitfire Mark 9 and 16. Uh, if you've seen this book, um, you'll know it's just a gem. This is a, a modeler's dream, if you're a rivet counter especially. Um, and it is germane to the Spitfire Mark 1 in the sense that uh, there's a direct evolution between the Mark 1 to the Mark 5 to the Mark 9 at least. Uh, the early Mark 5s were taken off the Mark 1 production line and uh, ditto for the Mark 9s um, in terms of the Mark 5. So uh, at least from the firewall back and uh, some of the wing detail, they are they have more in common than they have not in common. Anyway, this book is just fantastic. Uh, it was, came out in 2007. If you can find it, I recommend it. But this is sort of what's great about it. Uh, it has all of these wonderful drawings of, uh, especially for the fuselage, that, um, you know, I mean, the guy has measured all the rivets and stuff. And now, again, the Mark 9, uh, they differed in lots and lots of details, so you have to be very careful but uh, there is, if you want to understand how these planes are put together, this is a great source. Um, I think this is, there are some 124th scale drawings in here that you can uh, see, by the way, that the Airfix, uh, uh, Airfix kit is actually uh, very good. These are 1 10th scale drawings of the fuselage fuselage skin but there are 124 scale drawings and of course you can with again with dividers and stuff you can scale these up directly you know here's all details of how all the hatches are put together again I know that the rivets changed on these uh, on all of these parts so you have to be very careful about that but I, the basic construction I think is pretty is pretty true uh, again this is shows up where all the stations are uh, for the formers and anyway, this book is just crazy. Uh, if you're building a Mark 9, you've got to get it. Uh, you know, if you care about, you know, if you care about the nitty gritty details. But it's still useful even for a Mark 1 build or a Mark 5 build for that matter. Again, everything from the firewall forward pretty much isn't, does not apply. Uh, but from the firewall back, especially, um, especially the fuselage. There's a lot of interesting stuff to understand about how these things were put together. Um, you just have to be careful with the details. You know, rudder pedals uh, on a Spit Mark I were not the two-step kind. The undercarriage um, mechanism, of course, was hand-pumped, uh, at least on the early ones, and so on. The seat's different. You know, they, they had metal seats in the Spit Mark I. But, you know, those things aside, um, the, con the basic construction of a Mark I and a Mark V and a Mark IX, pretty much pretty consistent. 
So anyway, that, that's this book, Spit Mark 9 and Mark 16 Engineer, excuse me. Um, might be hard to find nowadays. It's worth looking for, especially if you're building a Mark 9. Um, okay, so the last book I have, at least in book form, is to show you is this ancient book, Camouflage Markings. Let's see if I can find. Yeah, <laughs> my mom got this. Uh, got this for me when I was 13. I was born in 1960. Um, pretty much on my birthday. It's actually this is my wife's birthday. Um, but it must have been from. Yeah, she bought it in Chicago, one of the great bookstores that you could used to be able to go in and buy books like this. Um, anyway, this is Camouflage and Markings. I'm pretty sure this was a, a serial publication like Aircraft and Profile was. Um, perhaps not. I'm not really certain, but it's certainly laid out that way. Uh, the chapters are uh, one type at a time. And um, it only covers uh, Northern European uh, RAF fighters, uh, yeah, you know, wartime RAF fighters that were in the Northern uh, Theater. So no desert markings, no, you know, uh, uh, Italian theater markings, um, certainly no markings from the Pacific Theater just European stuff, and it goes into all the gory details. Um, you know, I'm sure all about A1 roundels and uh, C1 roundels and all of that, but here, you know, this is pretty much, you know, straight from, not straight from the horse's mouth, but uh, I think uh, pretty authoritative in terms of uh, when markings were introduced. And, uh, of course, this period of time that we're talking about, the early you know, the early war period was a time of very rapid change in the uh, markings for these airplanes. Um, it, you know, it was a time of crisis, a time of uh, orders that were, you know, being uh, uh, entered and sort of countermanded almost as quickly as they were, uh, you know, uh, issued. So uh, there's, uh, you know, especially the, you know, the knight and white and uh, silver or aluminum under surfaces, and then the uh, sky blue, all of that stuff, you know, the undersurface, you know, evolved super, super uh, sort of quickly and chaotically. And uh, this kind of uh, documents that pretty well. So anyway, it's an old book, but I think it's a goodie still. And, um, you know, if you can find this like on a old book reseller, it's worth having um, on your shelf. It's pretty wonderful. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, the books that I have in uh, actual print form. There's one other book I want to talk about. Um, I don't have, uh, I actually only have it in Kindle version, but it's uh, called Spitfire Mark I P9374. It's the story of the restoration of well, actually, reconstruction, replication, restoration, I'm not sure what you want to call it, but it's uh, its a story of the wreck that they found in the uh, sands of uh, Pas de Calais in uh, 1980, I guess. It was a plane that was lost uh, b before Dunkirk. Uh, it was buried in the sand for 40 years maybe a little more, uh, and when it first was exposed, it was in remarkably great condition. Unfortunately, when they tried to recover it, they essentially destroyed it. And um, that, however, led to uh, some very rich person buying the uh, remains of it and building a meticulously accurate reconstruction, replica, whatever you want to call it, a new Spitfire basically using the ghost of <laughs> this wreck. Um, but what's interesting about the book is that, uh, for one thing, it underscores that uh, the nature of what 
was really on an early Spitfire Mark I is pretty elusive to this very day. Uh, again, the museum uh, examples that are existent um, aren't really uh, prototypical of what of uh, Spitfire in 1940 would have looked like. Well, not would have looked like, but would have how it would have been equipped. And they've, there's been numerous changes and upgrades, which is all very natural when you think about it. They have a fighters, a second line fighters that they want to keep uh, sort of relevant during the war. So they make all the same modifications they're making to all the rest of them. So anyway, um, the sort of original condition kind of gets lost a little bit and uh, they need to resort, uh, the story sort of points out that they really sort of need to resort to this aviation archaeology of these wrecks to kind of understand what a Mark I instrument panel looked like in 1940. It's, uh, so, they, uh, so it's a pretty interesting book. It's not uh, really a modeler's reference, but it does kind of speak uh, pretty strongly to the... Uh, the elusive nature of the early marks of Spitfire and and uh, you know so if you're gonna build the this old kit or the new Qatari uh, Mark one which is coming out I recommend reading that for inspiration you can find a treasure trove of original Spitfire drawings online I got these from a site that's called Aircraft Reports. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of drawings here. Uh, you have to be careful, for instance, you know, although this uh, purports to be uh, germane to the Spitfire Mark I, some of these drawings clearly are not 1940 era Spitfire Mark I drawings. This is, you know, a, uh, the sliding canopy uh, of the Mark V style. But anyway, there's absolutely tons and tons of drawings here that are super interesting and useful. Um, if you are, if you want to go nuts on your build, I recommend uh, checking out these blueprints um, and drawings. Um, there are, like I said, there are just, you know. If I list them out, you know, you can see there's just bazillions of them. They're they're organized pretty much by the uh, Type 300 uh, drawing nomenclature. Uh, you know, we'll just open up the brake gear ones and we'll have a look in here. And you know, you know, it's just it's just crazy. So uh, lots and lots of neat information in here. Um, recommended. A channel here on YouTube that I really recommend is UK Aircraft Explored. I'll put a link to it in the comments. Uh, this is a fantastic in-depth look at the uh, construction and operation of Spitfire Mark V's. Uh, in particular, again, uh, there are tons of detail differences between Mark I's and Mark V's, but they share more in common than they uh, are unalike. If you're interested in how the stuff worked on these planes, the this channel is fantastic. There are, I don't know if there's eight or nine videos just on the Spitfire Mark V. Highly recommended. So I'm not really much of a gun nut, but if you want to understand how the machine guns worked in a Spitfire Mark I, the 303 Brownings. This video uh, by Jonathan Ferguson, uh, his channel is called Royal Armories, does a really good job of explaining how the guns were modified to work in uh, RAF fighter planes, uh, especially with the kinds of ammunition that they were firing and uh, how the trigger system worked uh, with the two pneumatic, basically there's sort of two triggers on them. Um, and that kind of is an interesting detail that you might want to incorporate in your builds. So yeah, uh, I'll put a link to this in the 
uh, description as well. Well, that's about it for this installment uh, regarding references for my Spitfire Mark I build. I'm sure you have your own favorite references, maybe some that aren't quite as ancient as the ones I showed you. If so, please let me know in the comments. I'd uh, be more than appreciative to uh, see what it is that you guys are using. Um, next time, I'll talk a little bit more about the theory of this build and why I've started cutting this model into little bite-sized pieces. Uh, there's a method to the madness. I hope you'll see. Uh, and I'll show you how I did it and, um, and explain why I'm doing it. So until then, thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe uh, for the sake of the algorithm, if nothing else. <laughs> until then, see ya. Happy modeling.